If you're new to my channel at the moment, I'm turning this full transit into a stealthy off grid, go anywhere, sleep anywhere camper van. And today I'm doing my wheel arches, or the inner wheel arches. And as you can see, they're looking rather cosy. <laughs> For this, I simply used the recycled plastic loft insulation. That's great stuff, I've spoken about it before. Um, I was about to put the box on the top, and I suddenly thought, actually, I should make a video about this because some people don't ask <laughs> now the boxes that go over this originally what people what most van insulators do they tend to drill holes in the side of the wheel arch and screw the box to the wheel arch like direct into the metal which isn't very good because they go rusty and i'll show you the other side so you can see what i mean just move this out of the way i should have been more prepared shouldn't i <laughs> Okay, so this is the other arch. This is uncovered. And as you can see, there's holes. There was holes drilled here, holes drilled there, screwed directly to the wheel arch. But I don't like to do that because you've got the potential of the wheel arch going rusty. And this one had just started going rusty. But as you can see, I've treated it with red oxide primer. I've filled the holes with a bit of mastic. Not really much of a drama. So when I fit my boxes back on, now I'm using the original boxes. I was going to make some new ones because they were a bit shabby, but um, I managed to salvage them. What I've done to give them a bit of strength, because the, when they when these wheel arch boxes are made, they're just stapled together. So what I've done, I've reinforced it with some timber, just where it needed reinforcing, where the staples have broken free. And there's still pieces of timber are screwed from the outside in, as you can see all the way along there. It just makes it that little bit stronger. And to fix the box to the van, I make a frame like this, and that simply slides over the frame and screws in. I can't put it in place one-handed. <laughs> I might be able. It's a real snug fit. Yeah, there you go. So that fits over like that, and then I'll simply screw it around in place. Maybe put a little clip it on the bottom in each corner and then that's fitted there like that but before I put that in place I insulate it like that one there um, it does look a bit shabby but um, at the end of the day it doesn't really matter because the box goes over the top of that now I want to show you something about this insulation as well because the boxes originally go right up against the side of this if you use the full thickness it tends to blow the box out you can't get it on so what you need to do is make this just a little bit thinner for the sides and to do that as you can see look it, it's layered so you can actually part it I don't know if I can do this one-handed anyway let me just put you down for a minute so here we go look at this you can actually separate this stuff like that so you, so you can actually make it half the thickness Now the reason I'll do this is purely because it's better than having the whole thickness there and then squishing it together because once you squish it together you're, you're doing away with all the insulation properties so you're better off halving it if you need to fit it in a small space than you are forcing it into a small space that's my theory anyway so that's what I do I'm quite happy with that <laughs> and there you go it's on the side of there and the reason I halve the top of it is the same thickness because plenty of room but the, the side facing wall there, because these boxes are made to fit, they're, they're not deep enough. Um, if I was to use the full thickness, they, they wouldn't go up against the wall. Um, well, I could, I could have forced them against the wall, but like I said, it'll, it'll squeeze that together and it become, it won't become insulation barrier anymore. It will become sand deadening rather than insulating. If that makes any sense. Does that make any sense? <laughs> leave a comment below <laughs> right now yesterday I had um, security locks fitted to the van and I wanted to film the guy doing it so you could see how a professional fits these deadlocks but he was a bit shy but uh, I will show you what he's done just so that you're updated with progress and all that good stuff so we had locks fitted yesterday security locks deadlocks I think they call them there you go really neat better than putting a great big padlock on the back of the van i think now the nice thing about these is these are the modern version and a lot of these like the older type the actual lock here is just a bolt that comes out 
But these ones, hang on, I'm cack handed. I've got an actual hammer that comes down into a place like that, so it hooks in rather than just sliding out. And once that's in place, there's no way they're going to crack that open. And the other good thing is, because this company specialises in locks for vans, actually that's the name of their company, <laughs> go figure. <laughs> now the guy told me they had these locks specially made for their company, and these keys actually fit the driver's security lock as well. The driver's door security lock, it actually fits that as well, so it's the same key. So you don't end up with a different key for this lock and a different key for the side locks as well which is a nice touch I think it's always nice to deal with professionals <laughs> I'll show you the side door as well there's the side door it's just down there it's the same system let's open it up so you can see inside eh? and it's pretty substantial as well look at that what a lovely job. I mean, the guy had done a really neat job. He had a special uh, template that he used so he knew exactly where to drill the holes. Sorry about the car. Yeah, he had these templates which he's put in place and it made it so much easier and quicker. Really professional. And that was a company called Locks for Vans. <laughs> I'll try and look them up, see if they've got a website. If they have, I'll put a link down below. It was a really nice chat, and he did do a really nice job as well. So there, that's you up to date. That's all up to date now. I'm going to carry on, and I'll uh, put these into place, and I'll show you what they look like. All right, so the archway boxes are fitted, as you can see. Ow, <laughs> scratch my nails. <laughs> I need to cut them. <laughs> my boxes are fitted. Now, they're really well secured. They're secured along these top edge down each side and that's all you need i mean that's not going anywhere that's lovely and secure there really is no need to drill holes and put screws in the side into the metal arch because all you're going to do is cause rust and we don't like rust not in air campers anyway now you might have noticed this little tank here this tank is going to be for diesel for the nighttime heater which is going to go there now i've featured these tanks before and the reason i'm a real big fan of these because they fit absolutely perfect like level as well with these boxes. Um, I don't know about other vans, probably just as good. Um, don't necessarily have to be a transit because most of these archway boxes end up pretty much the same sort of dimensions. And it makes really good room, uh, sorry, good room, <laughs> good use <laughs> of the void, the space that's behind that box. Not really much more that can go there, but these tanks, as you can see, they fit absolutely perfect. What I do, I make a little cradle that goes along here and down around the box, tank, sorry. So they fit absolutely pucker there, look at that. And I've got one each side as well. There's one this side, this one's gonna be for water, fresh water for this side, diesel for that side, just exactly the same as my van. Um, yeah, I'll show you what it looks like in my van, just in case you've not seen it. What they look like in my van, as you can see, absolutely perfect. I mean, they fit miraculously as if they're made for the van i really do i absolutely do um recommend these tanks there you go that's what it looks like now later on in the week because the weather's improved i will do a van tour of my van because i realized i've just realized that i haven't done an actual van tour and showed you around my van but i'll do that next week in the week when i'll get five minutes now before i go i better mention one little thing a little um a dilemma these tanks when they're listed on eBay they're listed with these standard lids now this is an unvented lid but when you order it you must ask for a vented lid otherwise this is what they will send you just a normal standard lid it doesn't cost you any more there's no extra fees involved but you do need to have a vented lid and the reason is because as the diesel goes down um, it uses it causes a vacuum to build up in the in the tank and then the diesel pump will then start to struggle to draw diesel out of the tank and what will end up that means is you'll get an error code come up on the little control panel of the diesel heater so that's why it's important to get a vented lid 
unfortunately we forgot to ask in this instance so we ended up with normal lids so i need to sort that out um probably during the week yeah so i thought i'd better mention that before i go and yeah we need two of those because this one as well <laughs> so if you like this video do give me a thumbs up and if you're new to my channel please do subscribe or consider subscribing but most importantly do leave a comment below if you've got any questions feel free to ask them i do answer all the questions well all the ones i see anyway sometimes i don't know why but the questions don't show up i have to go on my laptop to see them they don't always come up on my phone so if i answer if i don't answer straight away that's probably why because i haven't switched on my laptop <laughs> but yeah i do try and answer all my questions okay thanks for watching it's for now i'll see you on the next one